Good afternoon from the Second Age of Reason. Welcome to my picnic table. We are here in a congregation of picnic tables to give you an episode of the Second Age of Reason dealing with sci-fi feasibility. And today's feasibility topic is spacesuits. Now actually, it's not that much of science fiction, it's actually science fact. We have used spacesuits. We've used spacesuits in space, and we've used spacesuits on the moon. We use certain kinds of spacesuits here on Earth, but they're often called hazmat suits. Or automobiles. Or a lot of different things that are a way of giving you a protected presence in a special or hostile environment. The reason you need spacesuits is because in outer space there is no air or water and your body needs air and water to survive and it needs to be within a narrow temperature range as well. Spacesuits give you that little bit of a package surrounding your body to allow it to have a survivable life support environment. So that's what they do, is they preserve you a little bit of atmosphere and some moisture probably, and they keep your temperature reasonable. And that's what spacesuits do for you. But let's look kind of at the past and the future of spacesuits, because in the past it would just show um, your cartoon character wearing a fishbowl on their head. And we know a fishbowl is not much more effective than a rain cap. <clears throat> a fishbowl could probably provide you a little bit of protection like if you went underwater, give you an air bubble to breathe for a little while. And we know that when people go underwater, they have scuba suits or dry suits and wet suits as ways of being sort of like a space suit for that kind of water space. Um, there were also sorts of protective wear worn in the early aviators days when they were going up higher in the atmosphere. You know, when you're going up 20, 30, 40,000 feet, there's probably oxygen masks, there's probably special protective suits and things they wore. When we went into outer space, there was something that was more airtight and had sealed and flanged couplings to keep the whole body closed in a protected environment. In outer space, you didn't have to worry about the temperature that much because in a vacuum, even if the vacuum is 200 below zero, it's insulated, so it doesn't really transmit into the suit as much. So. <clears throat> Those are those kind of suits. And I know for doing work around space shuttles and space stations, the suits are a little more heavy duty and have maybe tools and things attached to them. Uh, for going to the moon, they had a certain sort of suit rigged up for that with special gold plated visors to keep the ultraviolet out to protect your eyes. But then we look into the future of sci fi, and there's Suits haven't really changed all that much, except in a few cases where they've shown interesting possibilities. You've seen in the sci-fi shows, they go to a planet and they'll say, oh, it's a Type G planet, atmosphere is breathable, and so on and so forth. Well, then they, you're assuming that the temperature is reasonable, too, and that they're always dressed appropriately for the climate conditions. They're always finding type G Earth kind of planets. It's kind of funny how that always happens. But we look in our solar system, there's only one really Earth type planet. Um, <clears throat> then you have weird planets. Planets that are like gas balls, like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. There is no surface for you to walk on. So a space suit wouldn't really help you very much there. Eventually, the pressure would crush you or the temperature would freeze you. 
So those plants are not suited to space suits. Um, solid planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Pluto, and Charon, you could probably go on those with a space suit and it would probably work. What about stars? I don't think there's a solid surface on a star necessarily, and so the spacesuit would have a similar problem. Uh, rather than being cold, it would be that it was too hot as it got into the denser part of the solar atmosphere. Stellar atmosphere, as the case may be. Um, there is the idea that possibly, by means of force fields, I mean, I've mentioned that maybe before, too. Force fields, what are they? What are they? <clears throat> they it's not like a necessarily a shield or something physical. It's a, something more electromagnetic. Something that what they call them deflectors, because they deflect energy. But what do they do to matter? So the idea of having something like a an energy type of spacesuit is an interesting concept that essentially you would wear something that would be powered somehow and it would put a field around your skin and your body and hold the atmosphere in by means of electromagnetic energy. And you could go to the moon and you could literally touch touch the rocks. You could go to a different planet and touch things. But you have to be careful of the temperature because you could burn yourself or freeze yourself if you're not careful about what you touch and sit on and whatever. But that would provide you the lightest weight, most flexible sort of um, spacesuit there is because you would basically wear your plain clothes or clothes that would be appropriate in case they got a little bit too hot or too cold. And uh, the electronic field around you would preserve the conditions of life support that you'll need as far as like oxygen and moisture and pressure and all that sort of thing. Recently, a new movie had come out with another novel idea. Um, it's called Avatar, in which case they would use um, a robot android or cyborg type of thing where the astronaut avatar not whatever it is is in an interface chamber and mentally operates this creature's body in which case you could go into environments that do not have air or water or have uh, atmospheres and conditions that are hazardous to human phys physiology and have motion and sensation and all sorts of things in there. And that was a novel idea. Um, that probably has some real possibility in maybe becoming real in the next couple of decades. Another thing that comes to mind is when you look at humans, it makes you wonder what are we really? What really is a person, a human, a human being? How does the whole thing work? Because it occurred to me after thinking about these ideas in an avatar, maybe we are sort of avatars, and that we have this human body, and it is sort of a spacesuit, ideally suited to planet Earth. And that there's something in that spacesuit that operates it. And what is that really? Is that something remote from this space-time continuum? Is it something that's just embedded in the spacesuit of a human body? Human bodies also have the advantage of that they can manufacture themselves and copy themselves by using ambient materials, which is quite ingenious. And if perhaps you had to exist in a planet such as Jupiter or on the surface of a star, that you would have a, a different kind of a body with a different kind of uh, interface 
adequate for those particular physical conditions. Things that may not make any sense from our human and earth experience. I was just thinking, what if we are wearing spacesuits right now so we can exist on Earth? And I wonder what is the true essence underneath that spacesuit? And would we recognize each other beyond the physical manifestation of the spacesuit that eventually, as all spacesuits do, wear out? Is the control in the spacesuit, <clears throat> or are we like remote controlled, like in the video game? And death could simply be where the the spacesuit or sprite or avatar gets damaged, where it doesn't work anymore, or where the communication link, the cable to the game paddle some vast game room beyond our imagination, that link gets broken. So, I just wonder, it makes one wonder about the nature of spacesuits and then people. I mean, in one sci-fi series, they were talking about souffles as an analogy. Is the souffle the physical manifestation of the souffle that you have this thing you can eat, and it has a smell, and it has flavor, and, it has all, and then you know that when you encounter it, it's a souffle. Or is the souffle the concept of the souffle? Or is the souffle the recipe of the souffle? Or is it in the experience of cooking and preparing the souffle that from when you have the idea to make it to the I time when you gather the materials and put them together and then it's the recipe. Maybe the recipe is the, the true souffle. So I just put some ideas out there for you. Talk about them. What do you think? Spacesuits. Are we in spacesuits? What is the future of spacesuits? What is your ideal spacesuit? And where would you like to go with it? So, until later, we'll be seeing you.